First, just want to offer a happy uh, anniversary or happy birthday. I'm not sure how best to say it. Yesterday, uh, March 11th, was the fifth anniversary of the dedication of our church. Uh, We had a mass yesterday with the bishop and a nice brunch, and uh, many people were able to come. But anyway, it's it's just a a great occasion uh, for us this weekend, um, celebrating our fifth anniversary in this new place. Uh, We're grateful to God for a beautiful building uh, but even more, grateful for a, a wonderful community, and I'm blessed to, to be your pastor and looking forward to the next 500 years. We're going we're gonna to be here a while. Uh, I don't know if you've ever spent a summer in Houston, Texas. I've spent many summers in Houston, Texas when I was a kid into my teenage years. Um, as good as it is, it's a great place to grow up. Uh, I love it there. Uh, it is not a pleasant place in the summer. And so there's this phenomenon that happens in Houston and probably in other warm places where very early in the morning, people get up and do things that they don't want to wait till the end of the day. Um, One of them is mowing the lawn. And so it was not uncommon in my youth when I was wanting to sleep in, as many teenagers want to do, and at 6, 6.30, 6.45, lawnmowers everywhere. And it wakes the whole neighborhood up. Now, I understand it. If you're mowing the lawn, you don't want to be out there in the hottest part of the day. You want to get it done early while it's a little cool. You want to do it when it's 90, not 105. We can kind of have that mindset in mind when we talk about the Samaritan woman of the gospel. Um, It seems like kind of a throwaway line at the very beginning of a very long gospel where it says that the woman went to the well to get water and it was around noon. Noon would have been a very hot time of the day. And so why would she go at this very hot time of the day and not much earlier? It tells us something about her. What we know about the Samaritan woman is that she was very much an outcast. The other women of the village did not want to be around her. We learn a little bit later why that is. But the woman was an outcast. She didn't want to be around others, and others didn't want to be around her. And so she went to the well when she knew that nobody else would be there at a very hot time of day. So she goes to the well, and what does she find? Water. And she finds Jesus Christ. Another little throwaway line is we're told that Jesus was tired after his journey Where was he going? He was going from Jerusalem up to Galilee. And if you draw a straight line from Jerusalem to Galilee, Samaria is not on the route. So Jesus goes out of his way to go to Samaria. Now, why did he do that? We don't know for sure. But I think for our purposes today, Let's say that Jesus went out of his way because he wanted to meet this woman at that well on that day. He could have gone straight. He went crooked. He goes to Samaria and he meets this woman. And he opens the conversation very easily. He just says, give me a drink. A reasonable request. But then a conversation begins. And what we learn very quickly is that this woman has a bit of a past. She has a history with men. She's been in and out of lots of different relationships. Jesus knows this. Jesus acknowledges this and doesn't run away like it seems like everybody else has. Jesus doesn't leave her alone. Jesus, in fact, draws closer to her. Um, It's a beautiful lesson of God's mercy. Here we are in the season of Lent. It's a time where we talk about sin, we talk about repentance, we talk about conversion. That when we sin, Jesus does not run away from us. In fact, he runs towards us. St. Paul to the Romans in the second reading, while we were still sinners, 
Jesus came and died for us. He comes to us in our sin. Same with the Samaritan woman. He goes out of his way, in fact, to find her, to have this encounter and to change her life. So what happens? They have this conversation. It's a conversation about water, about living water. The conversation changes her life. It changes the course of her life. So much so that she is compelled to go and to tell everybody about it. We're told that she leaves her jars behind. There's a beautiful image if you watch the show, The Chosen. It's a beautiful show that kind of depicts the life of our Lord. And the image that they do is she kind of throws these jars down and literally runs into town to tell everyone who she has met. She's been looking for the Messiah and she found him. And there's no doubt about it because Jesus actually says, I am he. Jesus leaves no doubt. I am the Messiah and I have come to talk to you. It's beautiful. And we get to listen in on it. But we don't want this to be an impersonal thing. Wow, that's so great that that happened to her. Because if we take our faith seriously, if we take the sacraments that the church gives us seriously, we can have such an encounter. The woman encounters Jesus, she receives his mercy, and she goes out and tells everybody about it. The Samaritan woman is us. While we were still sinners, Christ came to us. While she was a sinner, in and out of all these strange relationships, Christ comes to her, goes out of his way to come to her. She has this encounter, her life is changed, and she goes off and tells everybody she knows. This is a beautiful model for us. While we were still sinners, Christ comes to us in the Eucharist, in the sacraments, in confession. Christ comes, gives us his mercy, and then sends us out into the world. There's a two-step thing here, not just an encounter with Christ, but then to take Jesus and bring him out to the world. And because of the testimony of this sinful woman, we're told that many come to believe in Christ. That's our job. That's our mission from the day of our baptism to continually over and over and over again encounter the Lord and then to take him out into the world. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to set us free. But he also came to send us out. And so strengthened by the sacraments that we receive today, by the power of Christ, by the mercy of Christ, he came to save us, to set us free, and now to send us out, just as he did for the Samaritan woman at the well.